My name is Alexey Koveshnikov, and I would like to take this opportunity to share with you some of the things that have been motivated, motivating me um, in my research over the years, and I hope will continue to do so in the future. Let me start by posing a seemingly simple question. So how do people with different backgrounds relate to each other in organizations, and why does it matter? That's something that ha I have been fascinated about for many years since I was a little child. And here, let me tell you a little story. Uh, many years ago, I was born in a country that doesn't exist anymore, the Soviet Union. There were many beautiful things about living as a kid in, in the Soviet Union, but one of them I would like to focus on relates to the fact that um, official propaganda back, back then um, used to tell us that we, the Soviet people, we were all equal, we were all the same, we were all brothers and sisters. There were no, there were no differences between us, there were no borderlines between us, there were no fault lines between us, uh, there was no us and there was no them. Well, back then, I truly believe that this is possible to avoid the division between us and them. But of course, Childhood is a happy time, apparently even if you live in the Soviet Union, but then reality hits you in the face and you start to realize that things are quite different. For me, it was the moment when the Soviet Union collapsed and the Berlin Wall came down and suddenly I realized that um, the division between us and them is really strong, is everywhere, is omnipresent, and to a large extent unavoidable. Years later, um, I moved across real, not imaginary borders. Coming to Finland as a foreigner and living later in several other places around the world, I observed again and again how people construct uh, boundaries between themselves and others. And then how these boundaries, how, how they start to influence the behavior of people, their attitudes, their beliefs, their values. Um, and a re really important thing that I realized was that um, we construct those boundaries ourselves uh, more than anyone else. We do that because we would like to create a particular world around us, the one that we can control, the one that we can structure, the one where we can find a place for ourselves. But these ideas uh, later ended up in academia. And since then I've been exploring why and how people create boundaries between themselves and others. Uh, why they do this, how they do this, how do they try to manage those boundaries, how they try, try to overcome them, and what kind of implications all this has for organizations. Unfortunately, today, those kind of issues become more and more topical and more and more relevant. And um, let me give you three examples. The first one is immigration. So we know that today there are more people in the world on the move than ever before. People relocate across boundaries, borders, uh, across continents for various reasons, um, such as uh, economic inequality, poverty, uh, ethnic conflicts. There are also those who relocate because they would like to change their lifestyle, they're looking for cultural experience or better employment opportunities. But what is important is that these people represent a very valuable pool of competences uh, resources, skills, talent that can be very beneficial for the host uh, economy and for host organizations. Unfortunately, quite often we hear more about various challenges related to the, to the integration of these people into host organizations and host uh, uh, economies and cultures rather than um, about their merits and about their contributions. And I think as a researcher, I think it's a very important area for research, trying to increase our understanding how we could facilitate the integration of these people so that the host economy and host organizations could benefit from their talents, skills, and competences. My second example relates to nationalism. Well, many experts out there say that we live today in the times of deglobalization. And one thing that we observe is that um, nationalism and national populism are back into fashion. We see quite many um, populist political leaders uh, who come to power by talking about national interests, uh, the use of military power, 
the closing of borders, border controls, and they talk against things like immigration, um, international institutions, agreements, and against globalization as we know it. Importantly, what these people try to achieve, what these politicians try to achieve, is to change and influence the perceptions of, of people about themselves and about others. And then what happens is that with these kind of ideas in their minds, people go to their workplaces, to their offices, to their organizations, and start to rely on those ideas when interacting with others. And I think, once again, this is a really important area and fascinating area for research, trying to understand how today nationalism operates in contemporary organizations. Because by doing so, I think we will be able to shed a lot of light on how contemporary business organizations actually operate. The last but not least example I have uh, is about the COVID-19 pandemic. The phenomenon that has changed the, world, the way we live already and the way we organize things around us. The pandemic has been called as the final nail in the coffin of globalization. Another thing that it triggered is the fact that today nation states and nationalism are back into the limelight. Uh, during this year, we observed again and again how people around the world sacrificed their personal freedom for things like safety, health, security. These people succumbed to um, new limitations, restrictions, bans, boundaries, borderlines imposed on, on them by nation states. And of course, I claim that together with profound um, economic and political consequences, the pandemic will have really important, powerful and long lasting implications for how people will relate to each other on a global scale in the future. And as a researcher, I think um, it's our responsibility to, um, to take a closer look how the post pandemic world will operate. Uh, to, to take a closer look at how people will relate each other in, uh, in post-pandemic organizations uh, in the brave new world of tomorrow. To conclude, I would like to come back to my original question, which was how do people with different backgrounds relate to each other in organizations and why does it matter? I think it matters a lot because, as you can see on that slide, there's a number of things, a number of implications uh, that uh, these issues have and they relate to uh, individuals, to organizations, and to society at large. Only by addressing those issues, only by researching those issues, we'll be able to create better businesses, and through that, ultimately, we'll be, better, we'll be able to create better society. Uh, one thing is certain. It's going to be a fascinating quest, and I feel very honored, privileged, and happy to be part of it here at Alta University. Thank you very much.